Hope you had a good Thanksgiving, if you celebrate. I did. For the most part, started the day out with a beautiful feast at lunch. Hung out with my wife and my kids. We talked about things we're thankful for. Played some games. Sang some merry tunes. Well, we maybe didn't sing, but uh, then we ended the night. Capped it all off with a film. And imagine my surprise to find out a film starring Jack Black, directed by the Farley Brothers, who haven't made a good film since 20 years ago, directed a pile of shit. A film so bad, it ruined Thanksgiving for me. I'm of course talking about Dear Santa. Dear gods, why did I watch this? Who would have thought that a film starring Jack Black straight to streamer on Paramount Plus would be trash? I did, but I still went in and watched anyways. Once upon a time ago, the directors of Me, Myself, and Irene, the directors of Dumb and Dumber, one of my favorite comedies of all time, the directors of a few other pretty solid comedies over the years would go on to make some of the shittiest movies that are considered comedies, I guess, in the last 15, 20 years. Dumb and Dumber 2 ranking pretty high up there with insulting sequels. And I bring up Dumb and Dumber 2 not just for uh, nostalgia's sake, but also because it's kind of a, it's kind of appropriate based on Dear Santa. These two films have one key aspect in common. They're both very ugly, mean-spirited films. I have no problem with dark comedy. I have no problem with some mean-spirited ribbing, especially when it comes for a villain character. But I'm talking about everyone in these movies. Dumb and Dumber was great because these guys were both idiots and they did stupid things. They were naive. They did make ignorant decisions often to their own benefit as they saw fit. But then the sequel comes along and they are just straight assholes. Ignorant and mean-spirited. Not a good combination. But here we are in 2024 with Dear Santa, another movie falling in that same category of miserable, awful people doing selfish things told in a stupid way with some of the worst cinematography I've seen from a mainline directing duo in a long time. Now, Bobby Farley is the only one directing this one. His brother, Peter Farley, did the writing. Um, maybe they should have flopped? Maybe they should have <laughs> traded places? Because, uh, yeah, not great on either front. What's this film about, though? Let's get to the premise. And I will say, in this aspect, I, I thought it was kind of funny. Thought it was a good idea. Our main character, Liam Turner, played by Robert Timothy Smith, who is coming up in a couple other shows. He's doing that Star Wars TV series that looks kind of like a Goonies-esque thing set in the Star Wars universe. Um, if he plays that role like he played this one, yikes. Because kid actors are tough to come by and it's hard for them to sometimes, you know, perform in a way that's humorous and also has some emotion tied to it without sounding like they're just reading off the script. Yeah, he sounds like he's reading off the script and not doing a very good job of it. This poor son of a bitch suffers from dyslexia. He's dyslexic. He can't read correctly. The words are out of sync. This causes him to write a letter to Santa Claus, but he accidentally puts letters in the wrong spot and puts Dear Satan. <laughs> That's the only funny thing in the whole film. He does this not because the little boy, who's 11, believes in Santa. No, 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 no. His mom very much is in the Christmas spirit. He does it on her behalf. His mother loves Christmas. You can tell this because there's zero decoration throughout the house. They can't even get the goddamn Christmas tree up. Because his parents are in tough times. They lost a child. We know this because I think it's maybe said after an hour into the film, there is a hint on a picture frame in the background. But otherwise, they really don't dive into this at all. And then in the, in the later half, this becomes the, the kind of emotional core of the film. And the movie's trying to switch from uh, humorous, dark, edgy comedy, and it's not edgy at all, to sad, emotional, touching film. And failing on all fronts spectacularly. I guess before I go any further, I should say there will be spoilers. Uh, here's the biggest spoiler. 
I had a hard time getting through this and I was fast forwarding by the time I got to the last 20 or so minutes. And this same thing can be said for the three Christmas movies I watched on the streaming platforms. My God, we are not trying at all, are we, Netflix? Or Hulu? Or Paramount Plus? Or Peacock? Or any of these stupid streaming services? It's all about pumping out content. I fast forwarded every one of these at one point or I just straight up shut it off because I couldn't deal with it anymore. Now, this isn't like the most clever of concepts. In fact, I'm pretty sure every kid that was seven years of age and older at one point figured out, holy shit, Santa and Satan are, if you mix these, holy crap, they're the same word kind of, they have the same letters. This is crazy. Uh, the Farley brothers though, appear to have not really aged up their humor like a fine wine, it still stuck back when they were in fourth grade humor. And so this is what we have with Dear Santa. Shit jokes. We have one where the teacher sharts himself, and I believe Jack Black, who plays Satan, says, when a man sharts, a demon gets his horns. I'm paraphrasing, but honestly, I think that's about what he says spot on. Yeah, we get a scene where the teacher shows up in his bike gear, and he's like, <laughs> and Jack Black is like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> and the guy kind of stumbles away pathetically. Jack Black here is doing a bit of a little Nicky style of approach to Satan. You know, remember that uh, Adam Sandler chestnut? Yeah, that's what we have with Jack Black. He's giving it a really gruff, rough and tumble voice. Hey kid, you wanted to talk to Santa? Santa? Yeah, keep in mind this kid's dumber than a box of rocks. And so when Satan shows up, uh, the kid thinks it is Santa. The child truly believes he wrote to Santa Claus. Satan shows up in his closet with horns, looking like a, you know, kind of badass, I guess, as far as Jack Black can pull that off. And the kid, he's into it. He's like, yeah, that, that checks out. I mean, I thought Santa would maybe be more jolly and not look like the devil, but here we are. And so Jack Black kind of goes along with it for a while. And this whole thing is going to play out like an Aladdin genie of the lamp scenario. Black shows up. He says to the boy, hey, kid, you got three wishes. I did it first. Aladdin stole it from me. You never had a friend like me. <laughs> and the kid's like, OK, cool. What should I wish for? Out of all the things I could wish for, having all the money in the world, you know, never, never going hungry, uh, having unlimited friends, having women, you know, gush all over me. You know what? I just, I really like this one girl in my class. It would be cool if we could maybe like go on a date. That's one of his wishes of the three wishes. That's one of his wishes. Wish number two. This is even more precious. He's got one friend and here's where the mean spirited stuff's going to come in. He's got one friend and uh, his parents know their son sucks and is a pathetic loser, I guess. So they won't buy that he just has a friend, but he does. He genuinely has, uh, you know, a kid in his grade that they, he hangs out with. He's a nice kid. Gibby gets introduced to the parents as a child who is suffering with cancer. Laugh. Isn't cancer funny? <laughs> Subscribe for cancer. No, it's not funny. It's not presented in a funny way. It's just kind of mean-spirited and miserable. I, I can't even begin to like go through the process of how this could be a humorous joke. The film has nothing to provide for comedy. It sets nothing up as far as the punches, and it certainly doesn't deliver the hits. Instead, it's just awkward scene after awkward scene framed up in the most pathetic lazy ass way possible. This isn't the Farley brothers first foray into filmmaking. They've been doing this for countless years. So the fact that they can't punch in once in a while on a shot, they can't get closer to the camera once in a while. There are all these lazy ass mid-level shots and that's it. That's the whole movie. Um, this friend Gibby is all teeth, all teeth. He might have a face under them, but the poor kid, He's like a dentist's wet dream. At one point he's drooling because he can't talk. He can't form letters or words or sounds. And 
obviously he's wearing fake dentures or whatever. So back, let, let's go backwards. Let's re 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 rewind the tape where Liam says, for my second wish, can my friend's teeth be fixed? I don't even think his friend ever mentions his teeth needing fixing. <laughs> like, Liam's just, Liam, like the rest of the audience, just doesn't want to fucking look at those teeth anymore because they are hideous. And they're not funny to look at. They're just kind of miserable. They're just, they're just not appealing on camera. And so eventually they will get fixed and they will put different fake dentures on top of this actor's real teeth. And they're still gigantic because he's got fake ones on top of real ones. And I mean, honestly, it wasn't much of an improvement. The kid could just keep his mouth closed and things would be much better. But uh, yeah, he's wasted two wishes on two pretty trivial things. And so now we get to the final, final, uh, <laughs> no, we don't even get to talk about, oh my God, we got to talk about Post Malone. Once Liam makes his wish to go on a date with a girl, he gets his chance, his one shot, his one opportunity, Eminem. He takes her on a date to a Post Malone concert that apparently is taking place uh, in the back of a library. It's very quiet, it's very chill. Looks like there's an audience of about 60. What the hell kind of venue is this? Oh, well, we don't have a budget for anything else. I think the Farley brothers probably have a mansion with a larger venue, with a larger space that they could have put this on at, as opposed to wherever this is. The sound stage that our singer is on looks like about a six by six. He's just kind of pacing back and forth in a couple steps. Liam, of course, because Satan's there, Jack Black is able to do a few extra bonus wishes. So he tells Post Malone, he makes Post Malone think that Liam is the coolest kid in the world. Liam goes up on stage, which impresses not only the girl, but also everybody else in attendance, which is the 45 people. And he does a cool ass dance. And by cool, I mean cringy as fuck. Liam's like, yeah. Mmm, how do you like me now? And then you have Post Malone, yeah, yeah. And then Jack Black, of course, can't resist an opportunity to dance like a jackass, runs out there, yeah, yeah, I'm Satan. Ho 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 ho. ba da ba da skadoosh. I had pause on the video only to find out we weren't even halfway done. It's an hour and 40 movie. Hour 40, should be done pretty quick, cup of coffee. No, this takes an eternity. It drags on and on until the break of dawn. I think we can go to our final wish now. Liam doesn't want his parents to fight anymore because uh, his dad's a piece of shit and his mom is just, you know, miserable. She wants Christmas, his dad doesn't. It's that whole thing. And so he wishes that they can be happy and be together. And it's also revealed around this time that he had a brother who died. And they moved from their hometown Settle down here and it's clearly not working for the parents. This is not the way to build a story. You got to get this stuff in right away. We got to learn about the kid being gone and the move and how things are not going well because then I can understand why the parents are assholes and they're fighting so much, but it doesn't present it that way. And why does it look so cheap, Farley Brothers? I'm not expecting Christopher Nolan levels of cinematography here. I'm not looking for David Fincher to bust out, you know, five hours to get a single frame of video perfection. But my God, people, can we put the bare minimum in? So it's at this point that Jack Black's Satan, who's not, here's the big reveal, here's the big twist, not actually Satan at all. He's just a low level demon. Dressing up in cosplay, the real Satan, drum roll, please. <laughs> Is Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller has a cameo in this as the Dark Prince, the Dark Lord himself. And in this scene, which is green screened 100%, we have a total of two real back and forth shots, full body framed shots. Jack Black, Ben Stiller, Jack Black, Ben Stiller, and we just go back and forth. That's it. These are the shots. Once in a while, they give us a wide angle of just the one dude. I'm almost positive they were never together on set. It just, it reeks of a scene that was shot in an afternoon on a green screen for both of them. Absolutely horrendous production design. Pathetic. It looks like a Mortal Kombat background 
from like eight Mortal Kombats ago. That's the level of production on this thing. Ben Stiller is not happy with Jack Black's character. He says, hey, listen, dude, you went against all the rules. We do have rules here for a reason. How do you think we keep hell going, right? You're not Satan. You, you shouldn't have made this deal with the kid and you made it with him on false pretenses. So you are not able to take his soul because once Liam made his third wish, we get a Shang Tsung situation, which is another Mortal Kombat ref, short for reference, where he gets Liam's soul in like 60 or 70 years when the kid dies. But um, no, that's not going to happen anymore. So Jack Black has to go back, tuck tail, tell Liam, hey, hey kid, <laughs> whoops, I guess I can't actually take your soul after all. And so in the dumbest plot point humanly imaginable, we get to the end of the film. It's Christmas. His parents are both miraculously happy. There's a bunch of presents under the tree. But when Liam turns the corner, he's going to find the greatest gift of all without even opening a single package. And that's his fucking brother who's still alive. That's right. Brought his brother back from the dead. Yeah. What? And the parents didn't even know that he was ever dead. So he, he mind wiped the parents. But they're still living in their new location, which I believe the brother or the parent, one of them says that, like, why are we here in this state? Holy shit. And Liam is like excited to see his brother, but it's only for a second. It's for like five seconds of emotional connection. Like, oh my God, my brother's alive. I'm not going to cry or be completely overwhelmed and overjoyed or shocked beyond any reason of doubt. Instead, I'm going to take a couple seconds recognize what happened here and then i'm going to step away towards the camera and go oh no my girlfriend thinks that my brother's dead just kind of like my parents thought my other buddy had cancer i'm gonna have to lie about my brother still being dead here we go again wah, wah, fuck you this is so bad so awful across the board looks terrible the music's trash the again they, they're not even trying with the production design the acting is not good from really anyone jack black looks like he's phoning it in oh but don't worry don't think i didn't notice that little bowser stupid fucking easter egg lego set you had on the side of the screen so that people can go oh bowser jack black is bowser yeah. i hate this dear santa dear gods Anyway, that's Dear Santa. Uh, <laughs> you know, ha Happy Thanksgiving, Adam. Fuck you, I guess. Uh, movies rated, who cares? I don't know, PG, PG-13. Don't know who the audience for is at all. Because if you're a little kid, you're not watching because you don't want to watch Satan. And if you're older than, if you're a teenager, why? Post Malone, question mark? Is that really going to get you to watch the film? And adults should be seeing this going, wow, what an absolute joke of a movie. There's so much I glossed over too. Just every minute of this movie is a chore. It's it's just an absolute piece of shit from top to bottom. And I have no problem saying that. The Farleys have made some amazing films. All right, they can pat themselves on the back for all of eternity. They're wealthy. Uh, I feel bad for some of the actors who were dragged into this thing. Jack Black's gonna eat fine. So yeah, th this is just where we're at, okay? I'm sorry, it's really bad. Ho ho, holy shit, why? Let me know if you saw it, though. Please comment. I, I'd, I'd like to hear your own uh, experience. Maybe you gathered around the Christmas tree and watched this at Thanksgiving with the fam. Uh, some people set their Christmas trees up early. We do. We started doing that. I don't know why. Corporate America, I guess. Something like that. Please like the video and subscribe if you haven't. I post movie reviews every single week from the small streamers to the big grand films like Moana and all the other stuff coming out in between. If you love what I'm doing, maybe think of a Thanksgiving gift or an early Christmas present for me by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. I got a brand new vlog coming up on the channel exclusively for the, the larger tier members, but uh, I'm always giving back on there as well. So anyone who signs up at even the $1 tier gets access to over 300 exclusive videos and the, the perks just go up from there. They stack. All right, that's all I got for you. Hopefully I see you next time. Take care.